We're here this morning, August 29th, 2013, uh, with an oral history interview of Buzz Peth, who was inducted into the Ellensburg Rodeo Hall of Fame last night at a ceremony held at Central Washington University. Buzz, to start out with, state your full name and where you were born and when. Richard Dale Peth, born in Mount Vernon, Washington in 1937. 1937. And you're, uh, as we know from your biography, your family was involved with the rodeo business as you were growing up. Were you a competitor from the time you were a youngster or is that something that came yeah, up later in life? I, I was a youngster and roped like Cedar Rolling for five years. When I probably started out when I was about eight. Good. They, uh, Cedar Woolley, Darrington maybe had a local yeah. rodeo. Mainly Cedar Woolley. Okay, okay. It was close and why not? What your your family was in the stock contracting business. Did they have any connection to the Ellensburg rodeo as stock contractors? Did no, not at all. Just Wick come and fought World Series all. Okay. When uh when do you suppose you first thought or knew about the Ellensburg Rodeo? Uh, I know exactly it would be 1956 okay. when I started. That's when you started coming here yeah. as a contestant. Yeah, I probably I probably missed four years in 40 years. I'll be darned. You know? That might be a record. In We'd, uh, right back in the old days, we had to enter so early, or so we could enter so late. It was really good because I could see, but nowadays, if you had to enter two weeks ahead, I would have locked, missed a lot more of them. Just by virtue of being entered at other places. Yeah. Yeah. What, uh, maybe that's something we can talk about is how the entry system has changed over the years. When you first started coming to Ellensburg, did you call somebody in Ellensburg to enter? Or was no, it was entry? usually, uh, it could have been, uh, Sonny Kelsey, I don't know for sure, it's been so long ago, but uh, it was e easy to do. We, we only would call on Thursday or Friday, so one day ahead is all. You said Nowadays it's one month ahead or yeah, whatever. Yeah, the, the big rodeos it seems like it's quite yeah. a ways ahead. Yeah. What, uh, who are some of the competitors that you you competed against starting in the 50s and on through your Well, career? Dean Oliver was like in the calf roping. Okay. And, uh, you know, there were some local people like Sam Kaiser's dad and people that was competitive. And uh, it was easy to get entered and there was no problems. What about? Go ahead. Tell us a little bit about how the livestock has changed over the years. One thing I remember as a youngster is the Eaton Ranch bringing in Hereford calves that were oh, yeah. all the same and they were big strong calves. Uh, yeah, fresh calves and uh, usually bigger or maybe in early spring you might get some smaller ones where they just would be off the cow and they never had like even here at Ellensburg we roped calves on the cow for years and years it never changed yeah I, I remember it was, as a young person like I said they'd sort the cows off in the morning yeah and uh, they'd be bawling and the steam would be rising up there there's a yeah. famous picture that John Foster took of Ragsdale roping one at the uh -huh. back end with the sun coming up over the ridge it, uh, what about the, uh, remember when the shoots came out at kind of an angle? Yes. Do you remember when that changed and if that yep, was it a, changed a good about thing or? Right at that area, yeah. 57 to really close. Okay. The first year, I, I go by everything I'd done at Ellensburg. Bought a horse, sold a horse, changed horses. I had a, uh, uh, the first year I come, I, Pat Smith had a good gray horse that we rode for years. 
And then I bought a brother to that horse, and it all started right here, that we traded the gray horse. I traded him to Harold Holtz, and then I had a full brother to him, and, and uh, people nowadays, you probably will say the S too. <laughs> when he was a thousand, pound, a thousand pounds, he was just a year old. And I rode him at the rodeos when he was just barely two. Holy cow. Hound. You remember Hound? Yeah. 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 Huh. And rode him. And uh, I don't know how I ever got, got as stupid as I was on the calf horses, <laughs> how I got him going so good that he'd just bark it now. <laughs> now remind me, did most of the horses you rode at the rodeos, you kind of brought along and made yourself, or did you? Yeah, but in the later times, I just rode the best horse was there. Okay. Yeah. And hardly ever got turned down. Yeah. Dean Oliver maybe turned me down a couple of times because he, he, he mounted nobody. But then he got to have to ride my horse. So <laughs> How'd that it work out? Worked out a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> uh, can you say whether you like the bulldogging better or the calf roping? Or? No, I can't really say. Yeah. You know. Yeah. We bulldogged a lot of steers. Seems like. That was something I was going to ask. Do guys practice that steer wrestling more when you were? Yeah, younger? we did. Well, but I. I'm not around that area anymore, so I don't know how much you practice. Yeah. We practiced. Yeah. I, uh, by the time I started rodeoing, the calf roping is what you worked on, and if uh -huh. you went to somebody's place that had a steer or two and got to practice, that would seem like a bonus. It yeah. just wasn't something that... No, we'd have... Well, it was kind of... I was different than everybody else because... We had a ranch and we'd buy 15 steers or something, use them, practice on them, sell them, and lost money, but the ranch covered it. <laughs> <laughs> you had a way, a place to go with them, I guess. Yeah, right at my backyard. Yeah, yeah. Tell us, that's kind of an unusual spot to rodeo from, Bow, Washington. If yes, don't it, know where that it, is. it was, but there was, nowadays, You'd have never caught me doing that. Too many people. Yeah. You couldn't even get out of town in an hour. <laughs> Especially when the bridge went out. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it'd be tough. Because you lived up north there, is that part of why you, uh, we won't say snuck off to Canada, but went to Canada? Oh, yeah. Then? like See, we was in stock on trucking business for years. Not years. Maybe 10. Okay. And we'd always put on Cloverdale, B.C. Oh, okay. So I got used to that. So from the get-go, you were acquainted with the fellows up there and yeah. you had a, the little... And that's like, I say, 57 and whatnot. From then on, I went to Williams Lake the first time in 1957. And uh, then started going up there. But... Uh, and it was really simple in them days in 57, heck. They didn't know if you had even tied the calf down hardly. <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> they might have the plumber from yeah. downtown the yeah. flagger for the local rodeo. Yeah. Huh. When did that start becoming more professional or seem like they wanted to be more Yeah, uniform it just grew from rules? that about that time, 57 okay. up. Okay. Lots of people start going up there and then it got to be, in fact, I, I think that I won that rodeo 30 years apart. Cloverdale or no, Williams Lake? No, Williams Lake. Uh -huh. Oh, it was a wild west. Well, yeah, now the, that's a stop on most of those guys. You roped the calf and you couldn't even hardly see him because there was so much dust. They had no water in the arena. Huh? <laughs> no way. <laughs> it was... Out back, huh? Yeah, it was out back. Yeah. They all, all the people sat on the hillside. Nice, steep hillside. But it's a big deal now up there. 
I've never been to Williams Lake. It's uh, uh, remind me how far north it is. Uh, about 350 miles. Okay. Yeah, we could. They had match your openings and stuff for years. They'd get about six guys in the evening have an indoor jackpot. While the rodeo was going? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Seems like there's less of that these days where guys yeah. are somewhere for a whole weekend or for yeah. more time. Nowadays, you don't need to ask me about nowadays because it's, I've been away from it quite a while, but uh, it's totally different. Heck, they might have 80 guys up at one time nowadays. Yeah. I think there was 80 bull orders at uh, right next door here. Moses Lake. Moses Lake. 80 of them. 80 of them. Okay. And they were selected through the office and stuff. And there might have been eight, there was 80 in the morning slack. Maybe ten at night, and went on that way. Yeah. The guys that could make it. There wasn't a, hardly a guy from Washington or Oregon up on During the performance. That first <clears throat> slack day. Oh, the first day was slack. Well, a lot of the rodeos now are going back to back. It sounds like to where yeah, mm -hmm. you can run your first one in the slack that morning, and <clears throat> they just had one head there. But there's a lot of them got two now. Uh, I know a kid from Oklahoma, and he was going everywhere. He couldn't come here, but he went everywhere else, back east and everything. Huh. He's in the standings. He's about 14th. What, uh, did you do any flying when you were rodeoing? Is that, was yes. that part of your <laughs> pleasure? Uh, yeah. yeah, I flew quite a bit. Yeah. Never had no wrecks. Okay. Thank God. <laughs> Now, were these mostly just little jump planes that you had a buddy that might have yeah, a Yeah, I just had a, a little 150 two-seater, and uh, mainly just going, I, you know, I get stuck, uh, I was the youngest one, so I got uh, kind of hammered on having to be home, <laughs> so uh, I'd get, try to get set up to where I was up the first thing in the morning okay. on a day. I'd get up at daylight, a little before, and fly to the middle of Oregon, and I'd do my thing, go back, get in the airplane, and go home and be late that day. And that's uh, the way it went quite a bit. Never had, oh, I never had no problem. With the flying? Yeah, it was... Didn't bother you or... No. You know. did, did you ever... Uh, did you ever have a season, or Sam talked last night when you were inducted about uh, you never really rodeo on full time? Oh, no, no, you, I never... You, you never just said, no. okay, I'm going to take 1961 and go see if I can... Oh, no. You were, you were always working at the ranch and then rodeoing yeah. when you could. The year that uh, I was real close in, in both events, I, I can't really remember, but it just must have happened that way that I went to the right places because I never tried to make it, oh yeah, if my name was up there and I was 14th, I wouldn't just back off. But the one year, Truthfully, uh, I was good, whatever it was, I don't know, 14th, it wasn't real high, but it was 14th or 15th or whatever. And uh, that was in the days when we could enter here, uh, uh, frankly the day before the rodeo. Okay. So I could make it here, you know, if I, did or didn't rain or whatever. But then one year, uh, it started up entering more, and I couldn't enter. I maybe missed this three years in that amount of time. But I had to uh, 
they put me up and I was low on the totem pole, so I had to stay home and bail hay. Yeah, if there was a choice that had to be made, you had Yeah, to which was fine. Wick, which he fought bulls here too, and uh, if he was fighting bulls the day I was up, naturally he was, well I'd, just, I'd be the loser, which I didn't mind. Because he took over a lot of times when I... You guys work with each yeah. other a bit. Yeah. It was uh, not a problem. There's a... Uh, what, what part of your rodeo and career do you think you enjoyed most? Do you think it was your younger career when you were kicking everybody's butt? Or do you think it was later no. on in your career when you were kicking everybody's butt? I think that... Uh, my better years was maybe in damn near the forties. One thing that helped, and I think somebody would know what year it was, but I had a, about a, I don't know what it was, 15, 17 year of not drinking no alcohol. And that was a little better, because I could depend on doing things right a little better. Take care of business a little better. Yeah. yeah. Just quit. Yeah. Well, that's a, that was uh, one thing. I, Brian might be able, Brian West is here in the room with us today, but uh, when when we got a chance to go rodeoing with you, there wasn't any of that nonsense. You were taking yeah. care of business, and you were taking care of business for the for the whole yeah, crew. Yeah, uh, like. didn't do any of that. And I drink a little now, but it's a lot better. Oh. <laughs> 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 Would you like to talk about any of the horses that you brought to Ellensburg? You talked a little bit about trade cow horses, but... Oh, mainly, Sam asked me one day here recently, the best horse I claim I rode was, uh, in fact, I won a rope one here twice. One of was a horse of, uh, oh, his name was Goober. He was out of California. And, uh, I rode him for quite a while, and I went, when I was doing now, it's, yeah, I got to go rodeo in the, quite a bit in the winter time, going to the Arizona rodeos and stuff, just fly down and rope on that horse, and okay. he was a good horse. Yeah. He'd been to the finals and stuff, but he was really good. Do you remember when you started getting off the right? Yeah, about uh, 58. Oh, okay. So you were kind of a trailblazer with that, or two? Or no, it was. It was I was. Of... There was probably half the guys getting off the left and the right. Oh, okay. When I started, okay. when I really started, you know, '57 was the first year I really went any place. Okay. It was just a other than Cedar How old were you then? '57. 50, I was born in '37, so okay, I was. So you were 20 years you old. Know, in there. But, uh, and it was a definite advantage <laughs> if the horse just didn't start ducking. When, when more guys were getting off the left, did those horses stay straighter, obviously? That, I'd say uh, 59, it was probably 50%. But, uh, oh, Horse-wise, meant a lot. I had horses that weren't as good as some of the other ones, and I could still win more money, maybe. Just let you get them roped. And you were familiar with them, probably, too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What they were going to do. When uh, times, Jeff Copenhagen appreciates me a lot, and we'd rope, and rope, and rope. And uh, we probably ruined some horses, but 
we've got some practice. <laughs> you seem to be a person that liked to practice. Is that is that accurate? Yeah. Well, I had I was young and there was nobody to help me and Jeff was he was competition and we stirred him up to make him rope better and then I'd rope better. Having somebody to practice with and compete yeah. against at home a little bit. Maybe give Jeff a bad time and make him want to practice more and be faster and not. Okay. Yeah. Feed off each other probably. Yeah. Do you think your your sports background had to do with that? Your, yeah, I'm sure of that. You, you, and especially in the steer wrestling. Good. We'd, uh, I'd, uh, if there was, if I had 15 head of steers, five guys showed up, I'd let the five guys run them until they got tired and then I'd put a them all. <laughs> Got him softened up a little bit. Yeah. Oh boy. <laughs> uh, well, Buzz, there's been a lot of uh, uh, a lot of conversation about a record-setting cow milking run you made here at Ellensburg one year. Is there anything you'd like to comment about that? Or oh, there was a lot of stuff uh, that took place that. Uh, <sighs> Maybe it wasn't legal, but they, like, I'll bet you that I won, and I don't know if it was legal or not, but I, it was an advantage when the cow runs her head through the fence over on the far side, which happened many times, sure. and you get, get up there, and I've known I've milked them before, the mugger had a hold of him, probably. His, her head was in the, in the woven wire. Hung up in the fence. At the ranch, you wouldn't turn her loose and let her go to no, have a fair no. advantage. You'd keep her tight in the was, fence uh, there. Something they needed to do here to put off any uh, monkey business was the mugger have to take the rope off. Oh, okay. Do they have to take the rope off now? You know, I think, well, no, I don't know as they do. They change it. It makes a lot of difference if you have to take the rope off. Yeah. Now there's a difference. Yeah. You know, before you didn't take the rope off, we just roped them and... Let them go. I don't know how many times Smokey Kaiser and I won it. Quite a few. Yeah, same Could way. be ten. Yeah, we'd have to go to the record books for that. But uh, he, he very seldom missed one. And he would, uh, he, he was not that way, well, not that the, the people try, tried to run him in the, to the fence. They did because they was crowding him, but they, it wasn't that the myth. They, they roped that way. Yeah. But uh, Smokey and I could do it. Did most of the traveling guys enter the cow milking back then when they came you to know, the rodeo? You uh, know, maybe if they had... 30 cow ropers, which they, I think they did at times. Uh, I would think uh, half of them would be travelers. Okay. Yeah. You know, like Harry Charters, he uh, roped and mugged all the cows for years. Not years, it took about three years before they told him he could only mug one cow. <laughs> they put it to shut down on him. Yeah. <laughs> and well, I got along with Harry real good. He, he's a good guy. And uh, it was just gold in his pocket when the cow rope took place. Because if they could rope him, he could hold him down. I suppose, yeah. <laughs> There's a pretty good picture of him holding one for smoke, maybe. The terrain. Well, Buzz, what else would you like to tell us or share with us about the Ellensburg Rodeo? Oh, I really enjoy coming here when it was, you know, the, it's no different much now. Little, maybe a little longer score, but not much. But it was a total different deal. Kev's 
was never roped. A lot of times they wouldn't even hardly run through. The calf practically walked out. And uh, like heck, if you roped two calves in 20 seconds piece, you'd win money. That tells you a little bit about the because, score and the calves. Yeah, and the, and the calves are, ne I don't even think they tied them down. I'm pretty sure they did. Yeah, they're just big, strong yeah. branch calves. And it just, similar, it just got tougher, you know, as time went on. Did you Rare ever changed? Did you ever team rope at Ellensburg, Buzz? No, no, no. There's no team roping. Cow roping was what took over that. See, they barred Harry in the later years from. Well, I think he only got the monkey cows two years. And they outlawed him all together? Outlawed him that he could only do one. Oh, okay. Anybody could only do one. Oh, okay. But it was the Harry Charter's rule that... Yeah, that yeah it was. <laughs> He'd win all four or six places. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so they cut him off. What about you? Did they cut you off from that? No, yeah. no. The, uh, the, oh, I think it helped a lot if they, if, but being local now, I don't think they're having any problems with anybody doing any fooling around and, but they could, uh, taking the roof off the car would be a improvement, but it would maybe slow things down because There'd be cows get away if they'd have to chase. There'd be guys trying to chase them down to win fourth or something. And yeah, they've had they had it a year or two where you had to take the rope off, and there was yeah. a lot of that going on. Yeah. Well, Buzz, thanks for taking the time to share some of your stories. It's You're welcome. A treat for I me. Enjoyed it. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you.